Hi, welcome back to the workshop for episode 32 of the Rickenbacker 6 2012 string build. And in this episode, we're going to be completing the work on the top of the guitar by getting those pickups recessed in. Okay, so the big ticket item for this episode is to get these pickup routes done so that we've got everything in the right place. However, before we do that, there is one little job that I want to tackle, and this is sorting out these little bushes that we've got to separate these pit guards because I just feel that the ones I've got in are a little bit too big. If anything, they're kind of a mill or two too thick and they're quite chunky so you can see them poking out a little bit. So we want to do something a little bit better there. I could get some smaller little wiring grommets, but I've got another plan. Now on the episode where I installed these initially, I did get a message in the comments from someone to say that they would happily 3D print me some of these little spaces. All I needed to do was kind of give them the sizes. And that's a very kind and generous offer. However, it was an offer I declined purely because I've actually got my own 3D printer. I bought it a little while ago. I haven't used it for anything that was worth going on the channel, but I have got one. And I have got some plans to do some kind of custom 3D printing for guitar related stuff. However, that would mean designing and modeling those items, which is something I haven't got a lot of experience of. So this is actually an ideal starting point for that process because it's just basically a donut, isn't it? And having done a little bit of 3D modeling before, I know that modeling a donut is relatively simple. So all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take a few measurements off these to give me some kind of ballpark figures because I think at nine and a half mil, that's a little bit on the big side. So I think we could probably cut that down to six or seven mil. And the hole in this is quite big and it's a lot bigger than we need. I know these screws are two and a half mil, so I think we could make the hole three mil and these are a little bit too tall that's coming in just over six mil i think probably go with four millimeter for that and i think it might also be an idea to actually make them white and then even when you can see them you can't really see them so with those dimensions gathered we can now break out the laptop drop onto tinkercad which is the 3d modeling software i use because it's free and we can see if we can get this thing modeled up. And here we have the Tinkercad interface. As you can see here, this is the kind of area where you build your little models. And over on the right hand side, we've got all of these primitives that you can use to build your more complex models. However, on this occasion, it's a very simple model and we have a very simple tube here that we can use to actually build it with. And realistically, all we have to do is just change the dimensions. So that's seven by seven for the actual tube outer diameter, four millimeters high. And I'm setting the wall width to four mil, which will give me the size that I want. And there it is. That is pretty much what I want to do. So all that's left to do now is to save it out and we're going to save it out as an STL file. However, that is just a model and it's not the actual code that we need to run the printer. So to do that, we need to kind of open this in Cura, which is the slicer I use, which will generate the G code needed to run the printer. Now, the only change I'm going to make is I'm going to up the fill percentage to 80%, which is a lot more than I would usually use. But for something this small, it really doesn't matter. And then we'll get onto the printer. We just need to get it to auto home. So we know we're starting from the correct position. And with that done, we'll preheat it for the PLA filament I'm gonna use. I'll actually up both the nozzle temperature and the bed temperature a little bit once we start the printing, but these are a good baseline. And then it's simply a case of going back, selecting the file I want to print off the card and off it goes. 
Now this is a very, very quick print. I've done some prints which were like seven or eight hours. This one was less than three minutes. And we can see GGBO 2022 sat in the corner. There it is finished. So I'm just spraying some isopropyl alcohol and water mix onto the bed, which will help me to release it. And jobs are good in. And there are the three little bobbins printed up. They do need a tiny little bit of cleaning up just to get some of the, the swarf off them and just rub a bit of sandpaper on them and that should do fine. But before I do that, we'll just get this off and see if they actually work and do the job. Well, yeah, that's gone on absolutely brilliantly. And I think that does look good. There's less of a gap now between the two parts of the pit guard, which I think looks a lot better. And this is a lot more stable. These were a little bit too squishy. So there's a bit of movement there, but that's kind of taken that right out now. Okay, with that all sorted out, we can now get this taken back to pieces and start to deal with the job in hand, which is getting these pickups routed into the body. And the next thing we need to do is find out exactly how much material we need to take out of here to get these pickups fitting kind of approximately how we'd want them to. And if we put the rule on there, the bridge pickup is marginally lower than the neck pickup, but it's only around half a millimetre, so it's not really anything worth worrying about. And if we measure this little gasket, it's coming in at about five and a half millimetres. However, it will compress. So I don't think we need to take out that full five and a half millimeters. I think essentially, I want to drop these down about three or four mil and still have a little bit of movement. So I think what I'm gonna do is initially route out about four mil and then we can test fit these again and see how they're doing. If it's not enough, we can always route out a little bit more, but I'm pretty sure routing out that amount won't take them down too far. So we'll get everything else stripped off the body and get routing. And I've made myself a little template. This is gonna be quite straightforward for the bridge pickup. We just need to position that, stick it in place and do our routing. However, obviously for the neck pickup, that's gonna be slightly more difficult because obviously we've got to get over the top of the fretboard. So to do that, I'll just kind of configure some of these little bits of MDF in the appropriate places so that that will go over the top of them. Bit of faffing about, but nothing too onerous. But in the name of simplicity, we'll get the bridge pickup done first. And as always, masking tape, super glue, jobs are good.
Okay, so there's both of those routes done. Went very well in the end, happy with that. So next up, we'll just get everything reassembled and just make sure that it's actually worked out okay. Okay, and there it is all back together. And if I get a straight edge onto the fretboard, you can see there, there's clear distance between both of those pickups now, but there is also a degree of upward adjustment. So I'm really, really happy with how they are now. And with the bridge, I mean, that is at its absolute maximum setting. So there is no issue there whatsoever we can get a nice workable action and some clearance over the pickups. So that's all great. So that was only a small job, but that was quite nerve wracking and could have gone horribly wrong. Luckily it hasn't and everything's good. And as such, that kind of wraps up work on the top of the guitar for the time being. So next time we're gonna flip this over, we're gonna get it into our specialist neck cradle and start to carve the back of the neck. However, I'm reaching one of those points in my life where I'm going to be incredibly busy for the next few weeks. So I'm not going to be back in a few days as normal. I'll be back this time next week with the next episode. So until then, like if you've liked, subscribe if you haven't already done so, and I'll look forward to seeing you then. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye-bye.